In radiation, the term half-life is often used, and sometimes it's actually misused. Here's a quick look at what it actually is. Start off, different radioactive elements decay or transform into other elements at different speeds. Each time an atom decays, it gives off radiation as a result. The time required on average for half of a given mass of an element to transform into the new element is what's called the half-life. This doesn't mean that if the half-life of an element is one week, that after two weeks all of the element would have decayed or transformed. Instead, it means that after two weeks, three quarters will have decayed. As the element decays, it will give off alpha, beta and gamma radiation. Depending on the element and the particular isotope of that element, it will give out different proportions of each. Alpha radiation is two protons and two neutrons, which is basically a helium atom. It has very little penetrative power, and it's only dangerous to humans if it's swallowed or inhaled. Beta radiation is an electron, and as such it has much more penetrative power than alpha radiation, but it still can be stopped by a relatively thin sheet of aluminium. Gamma radiation is an electromagnetic wave like light and various other electromagnetic waves. And as such, it's what all that lead shielding is actually trying to stop. Some elements like uranium-238, for instance, have a half-life of billions of years, meaning that they will virtually always be radioactive. But unless you have a very large amount of it, the actual amount of radiation given off in a single minute is actually quite tiny. For instance, granite naturally contains small amounts of uranium-238, which decays in a series of steps to eventually form radon-222, which can then escape from the rock in the form of a radioactive gas. This is why areas with uh, high amounts of granite have a slightly increased amount of background radiation than areas that don't have that amount of granite. Now let's look at carbon. Carbon has many different forms. The most common forms are stable and non-radioactive. But it has a range of forms which have a half-life of a fraction of a second. This means that these elements are rapidly transforming and giving out radiation in very large quantities for each given mass. But it also means that very swiftly nearly all of the atoms will have decayed and what's left will barely be radioactive at all. Now, radiation is very dangerous and if mishandled can kill and pollute the environment. But the half-life of the substance isn't always a key to how dangerous a particular element is. Half-life is just purely how long it's taking to transform from one form into another. Don't let people mislead you by just quoting a half-life and making you feel scared. There's more to it than just a number.